Hey guys, welcome back to AO Farms and welcome to this guide on how to set up a sheep farm in Farming Simulator 22. Let's get into it. Alright, so first thing we need to do is set up a new save game. So let's set one up here. So we're going to go into New Farmer, so Easy Mode. Uh, we're going to go Elm Creek. And if you've got mods installed, you can add them, but don't, don't worry about that for now. We're going to use base game equipment. So let's begin. So let this load in and then we'll... Alright, here we go. So we're just going to go Standard Character, not going to worry about that. Okay. I'm going to assume that you've done the basic tutorial, okay, so let's skip that. Okay, cool. Alright, so base game, how you ex how you experience it straight out of the box. We're not going to change any settings. We're going to basically work with what we've got, and then we're going to build out our sheep farm from there. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to harvest this wheat. So we're going to jump into this guy. So you've probably already done this in your tutorial, but basically what I want to do. Um, is take this wheat and sell it. So I'm going to hire a worker. All right, so we'll send this guy off on a worker. So we are going to dump the straw also, which is, which is already happening. Okay, now this guy here, it tells you to plant canola um, in the tutorial. But what we're actually going to do is plant grass. So if we come over here, Scroll on over to grass, hire a worker, just double check that's planting the entire field, looks like it is. So the plan is, basically what we're going to do is we're going to turn this field into a grass field. Once this, is, once this wheat's harvested, we're going to turn that into a grass field, and then we are going to build a sheep barn over here. So we're going to keep all the base game buildings, you can, get, you can delete what you, don't, what you don't want, but for our purposes, what I'm going to do is build in this area so all right next thing we need to do is we need to get a loan okay because obviously new farm mode we're short on cash so basically if we come into the finance menu which is this guy here and we're going to borrow the maximum amount which is five hundred thousand. so on the ps5 hit square to borrow so i'll see you guys once i've added the 500k okay cool so five hundred thousand. now you may think oh this loan's huge the repayment's going to be massive the repayments on this loan, I believe, are about 1,166 1, per month, which is um, minuscule. Okay. Now, one thing we are going to do is we're going to put down some solar panels. So, usually what I like to do is I'll put down I'll put down one to start with. And the reason why we're going to do this is to cover our leasing costs. So, if we go... Overlaps with an object. Okay unusual probably because the tractor was there so usually what I like to do is get them as close to this fence line as possible okay I'll pop one in there so that'll generate about 3,000 on average per month which is going to be more than enough to cover our lease uh, initially okay next thing we need to do is we need to place down our sheep barn so we are going to go into animals into sheep we're going to go base game sheep barn large 65 sheep 97,000 and we're going to put it so we're going to toggle snapping off so obviously we can't go too close to that silo um, now you can play around with what works best for you but what I am so what I should explain first is there is a couple of a couple of points you need to know about so on the, you can kind of see it, the black and yellow cross hatching, that's where the wool is going to spawn. So it'll be more visible when we place this down. So that's where the wool is going to spawn. So we have to have clear access for that. The paw print is the animal dialogue box. So if we're going to use the trailer to transport animals, so it looks like we've had a bit of a hold up on our farm. So we'll come back to that when we get this sorted. Okay, I'll send these guys away. What I actually am going to do is I'll grab this guy so cultivator on the front weight and we're going to cultivate this wheat field that we've just harvested so we're going to start him up in the opposite corner so we're just going to be trying to be trying to be as efficient as possible here so once again hire a worker now overlapping the field slightly but it's not going to cultivate the verges because it doesn't recognize as, as a field and we're going to cultivate this straw into the um, ground, so also not an issue. Alright, back to the sheep barn. So I'm just going to jump out, jump in here so I'm out of the way of things. 
All right, animals, sheep. Sheep aren't large. Now, I was kind of alluding to the interaction points before. And then the feed point is in the front. Okay, so wool spawn, it's kind of clipping into the ground so you can't see it. That side there on the left is where the pallets will spawn for the wool. So we just need to be mindful of that when we're placing it down. And the area that we want to place it in, it's got to have reasonable access. So I'm thinking probably, maybe not there, uh, maybe not there either. I think probably this way is going to be the best. So I've got, I've toggled snapping off in the build mode by pushing L3. So I can rotate it freely on whatever angle. Or it'll snap to predetermined angles there, which I uh, tend to prefer. So what I'm thinking is probably... Because the other thing too is we can delete that silo and get some cash for it. Um, but it is useful to keep it there if you're not sure what your future plans are going to be. Um, I think probably... I think maybe here might be the best spot. Because then we've got plenty of room to get out. And we're just going to use the field that's already here as a guide to how to place this. Now I am taking my time to place this. Because I just want to be sure. Okay, so let's hit X to place. And let's have a quick look. Okay, cool. So we're on a nice level ground. This is the spawn point for the wool. So we're going to be driving a telehandler, telehandler or a tractor or some other vehicle to load these up. So we've got plenty of room. We've still got our silo intact, so we can put our wheat in there. Uh, we've also got the feed point, which is nice and accessible. And we've got the interaction point where we can buy the animals uh, and transport them. And then we've got this area here where we can put some other stuff later, which we'll get to. But it's all about um, just giving ourselves enough room to do what we need to do. All right, so that's the sheep bar, sheep bar placed. Let's have a check on check in on our vehicles. Okay, so we're just about done. How's our cedar traveling? So basically, the process from here is we just got to get we've just got to get these guys completed, and then we're going to go look to buy or lease some equipment. So I'll let these guys do their thing. I'll throw it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and minimise the amount of cuts that I do in the editing. So I'll time lapse the various jobs just so you can sort of see in real time what's happening so if you want to follow along you can do so all right so our harvester is done now it's up to you whether you sell this or not i potentially would keep it just initially because it'll give you more flexibility down the track uh, for what you want to do in your farm so obviously sheep is a starting point but You'll probably want to expand into other types of farming as you move forward okay so we you can either sell this wheat directly or you can store it in your silo it's uh, essentially it's up to you cool so we're moving along nicely okay well, let's get this guy so we're just going to park this trailer probably there now we want to take we want to have a quick look at our fleet of tractors so if we go to the now, used vehicles is something we'll talk about, but we're going to pass on that for the moment. Okay, medium tractors. So they're all around the 170 horsepower mark. The 470, 4755 is a little bit more powerful. But these two, the 7810 and the MF360 Macy Ferguson, can attach a front loader, which may become useful in the future. This will basically determine what sort of mower... Uh, we can buy so let's go and take the macy don't sell it that'd be silly so i'm going to drive the macy down to the shop and then we're going to go grab a mower because that's going to be the first thing we need once our grass has grown to we need to cut it then we need to ted it then we need to wind roll it and that's going to turn it into hay uh, but for the sheep primarily we're just focused on grass at the moment so we don't need to worry about take turning it into hay but i'll show you how to do that um, at some stage so i'll see you over at the shop if you're not familiar with, with where the shop is elm creek down the main highway from the starting farm and it's just coming up on the left here all right here we are at the shop so what we're going to do is we're going to look to purchase a mower so when i come into the tools so we've got a 170 horsepower tractor if we come down to mowers so we've got a couple of different options here so pretty much they're all part for the course in terms of functionality 
they all cut grass. So they've just got different working widths, horsepower requirements, uh, that sort of thing. So we could take this one, the Pottinger. It's quite expensive though. And the Kong Slide, Kong's Glide. And then we've got a couple of others from DLC. So the one that I would recommend is you grab uh, this guy just here. So what we're going to do is we're going to lease these. So let's... So it's very, very basic leasing costs. Okay. So we're going to lease this one as well. Keep me in mind that the solar panel that we have is going to cover the costs of the lease. Okay. Now, what we while we're leasing now is because it allows us to leverage uh, cheaper equipment initially, um, and then when we get something in the used vehicle sales, which I'll mention now while we're here. So used vehicle sales, if we've got an eye on a mower or a tractor, we can get a, a pretty significant discount, and then we can start to reduce our leasing costs over time. All right, so first bit of equipment, the, the mower. So what we'll do is we'll unfold this, just demonstrate it while we're driving back to the farm. Because we've got plenty of road here, obviously I wouldn't recommend this normally. But you can see this, the front and the rear is obviously where the cutting, cutting discs are and then it'll do what they call a widespread so it'll just cut the grass in a widespread manner and then we'll, we'll have to come in and windrow it later so i'll explain what all that is when the time comes okay so first bit of, bit of machinery sorted all right let's jump back into our cedar so this guy here and we are going to get this grass planted in field 45. Now I should mention too, we've got our cultivator on the go. So this is required to, after you've harvested a crop, so we harvested the wheat. Um, we put it in our silo. Now we've got a, uh, well it's cultivated now, but you can see that there, the harvest state in comparison. We've got stones on, we've got weeds on, so you don't need to worry about weeds and you don't need to worry about stones for grass okay now I should mention this is base game settings so I haven't turned haven't turned any of the settings off which I'll just touch on quickly so if you're wanting to turn off various elements of the gameplay mechanics you can do that in this menu so you can change the time scale economic difficulty turn traffic on and off change the seasonal growth you can turn off periodic plowing crop destruction field stone all those sorts of things okay so just depending on what you want to do, you can tailor the gameplay to your preference. All right, moving on. Okay, let's just double check where we're at. So cultivation is done. So let's get this guy moved. Now what we can do is we can cultivate this area around the sheep barn, but we're just going to leave that for the moment because we're just going to focus on grass in fields 45 and 46 at the moment. Okay, let's grab our mower, get him off the road. Now with the seasonal cycles, so I'll actually, we'll talk about that while we're waiting for our grass to go in. Okay, so we jump into the main menu. If we come into crop calendar, so you can see here, this is all the crops in game, when they can be planted and when they can be harvested. Now this setting can be turned off, which allows you to plant whatever you want at any time. Now the good thing about grass though, as you can see here, so down the bottom, um, the planting season is from March through to November. So obviously you don't plant it in the winter, which is which is without goes without saying. Uh, but it can be harvested any month of the year, okay? And it has a it has a relatively quick growth cycle. So from once it's seeded, once it's seeded, we don't have to plant it again. We basically just come back in and re keep reharvesting the um, grass over and over, okay? Now we can get fertilization on there to improve our yield, which I will touch on now, but, and we'll cover it a little bit more depth later. So in the grassland care section of the tools, you can see here we've got rollers. So we've got the uh, metal, meadow roll vario and the maxi roll green line. So they, grass rollers and weeders, improve the yield of your grass fields, okay? So basically how that works is you cut the grass once, you harvest it, pick it up, roll over it 
and then you'll get a um, you'll get a yield bonus. So you can see currently our yield bonus is 35%, and on this field it is 35% also. So it says it needs lime and it needs rolling. So I'm just going to omit the lime for now, because if we come into this map here, yeah, so part of it needs lime, needs rolling. So lime and rolling aren't really required. It will still have an impact on the grass yield, but because the grass grows so quickly and repeatedly, um, it's not really that big of an issue. If it was a grain crop like sorghum or wheat or something like that, you would definitely want to um, do these steps to maintain a high yield. But just for our purposes, we're just going to go. We're just going to go through it as quick as possible. All right, so I'll let this guy finish off the seeding, and then we'll come back in. All right, all done. Okay, so grass is all planted. So let's get these guys off the field. All right, so that's the grass all planted. So you can see that's in there. So two fields, all good. All right, what we're going to do now is now we need to get this to grow. So let's go ahead and sleep. And what you'll see is we will get some property income and that's from our solar panel okay so that's going to give us some um, money each day so it's going to cover the cover the cost of the lease and it's also going to give us a bit of a profit just to keep the scoreboard ticking over in terms of income especially at these early stages with the loan so you can see that there loan interest fees leasing cost property maintenance three grand okay so if we want to check our profit and loss or our balance sheet you can see that there august obviously we took out the loan put down some expenses with the buildings etc um, and then we've got 744 in property income from well that's from today okay so you can see we're profitable from day one okay let's check out our grass so you can see the grass is growing okay so obviously it's not ready to cut yet with the mower but will be soon all right let's check our crop crop map quickly and we'll see what sort of state we're in so okay need to turn grass on first of all in crop types two okay so you can see the dark green signifies it's ready to harvest so i believe when i sleep one more day uh two days of growth and then that's ready to harvest okay so ready to harvest is orange so 47 and 55 are ready to harvest uh just as an example okay so there's nothing for us to do today except sleep again now obviously we haven't got any sheep yet so we're not going to put sheep in until we're ready to feed them but i just want to put the barn down Get that out of the way uh, in preparation for us getting some food together uh, in the form of grass and then we can go from there you can see that there four thousand in property income from our solar panels so we're making money covering our leasing costs and the grass is ready to harvest so let's grab our mower so one we prepared earlier and what we're going to do is cut this grass so i'm going to do a manual run so triangle will switch between your front and rear tools so you can see that in the top ui what you need to do is you need to unfold the mower. You need to lower the mower. Then turn the front one on. Press triangle to go to the back tool. So we need to unfold it. We need to lower, lower it once it gets down there. So you can see I've lowered that at the same time. Square to turn it on. So you can hear it running and now we're cutting grass so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do this field just to demonstrate now you can see also we're cutting the verge grass as well so when you do this manually what will happen is you can actually cut the grass verges to increase your grass yield so i'm just going to do that there actually what i might do is i'm going to nip around and do this whole field i'll do a quick time lapse because it won't take very long um, and I'll just I'll show you the process from start to finish. So see you in a couple of minutes. So you can see I've missed a few bits here and there, but that's part part for the course. If you use a worker, you'll generally get a better result, but it's generally pretty quick, uh, depending on the field size. Okay, so let's um, turn that off. Okay, so now we have 
cut grass ready be, ready to be picked up okay so next thing we need to do is we need to get a wind roll so what i should discuss quickly is the sheep feed so if we go into okay we've got no animals so what i'm going to do is i'm going to buy some animals now just so i can discuss the feed uh even though there is no feed to feed them they will just they, they basically they don't die or anything like that they'll just stay there um in the barn until such time as they get food now you've got two options well you've got four options in sheep variety and then within each of those four there's two age groups okay so you can get zero months or eight months eight months will reproduce um, offspring the zero months have to grow up to um, eight months before they'll start reproducing my preference is just to go straight to the mature sheep and buy 60 outright because basically then they're, they're just there for the wool they're not really there for a reproducing animal um, in this game so we're just going to go some black welsh mountains okay so this is that's the sheep purchase so i should mention too the sheep um are just cosmetic indifference so the obviously the wool is a different color but the the sheep all function the same way there's just cosmetic differences between the breeds so here we go these are our sheepies just hanging out in the pen or the barn cool all right so now what do we do we need to feed them okay so we've got them in there now that 60 number they'll they'll reproduce so they will reproduce if we want to get a second um sheep barn underway so we can move sheep from pen to pen but we'll cover that later on uh, I do have a sheep guide tutorial that goes into this a lot more depth. In a lot more depth, um, this video is primarily more so about setting up the farm. Okay, so we've got the grass there. Next thing we need to do is we need to windrow this in preparation for uh, either baling or using a loading wagon. So let's go and have a look at. Actually, let's grab a tractor first because that's the first thing we need to do. Now we are going to go the John Deere seven eight ten. So this guy just here. Gonna drop that cedar off. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send this guy over on a worker to the shop. Okay, so he'll drive on over there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at wind rowers while that's happening, so. Okay, so the sheep, so actually before we do that. All right, so sheep can be fed either grass or hay. So for the purposes of this video, we're just gonna be focusing on grass, okay? Because hay is an additional step, um, but the grass, is 100% productivity okay so we can focus on just the grass to get um, the sheep producing wool so what we need to do is we've cut the grass in the manner that we've already observed we need to come over and grab a windrower so there's a couple of different windrowers here and what a windrower does is arranges the loose material that's been cut in a widespread manner um, and it's going to put it into a nice neat line now a couple of good options here is we've got uh, the rake style okay so you can see the rake these two circles of rakes and what they'll do is they'll rake the uh, material up then you've got these type of windrowers which are have what they call a merger so the merger has a, is a belt system which you can kind of see um kind of in the black conveyor belt section there and what that'll do is it'll either um, spread the grass to a windrow left or right or to the center and then there's variations of um, that design. But they're the two primary types. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the Samaz Z284H, okay, and we're gonna lease that. Now the primary reason being, so obviously our workers overshot the shop here, so let's get him back on task. Uh, the one, the reason why we've chosen the one that we've chosen is it's a, it's a, good, um, it's a good price. So we've leased it, of course. Uh, it's also got a decent working width for the size of area that we're got, we're planning to windrow. So obviously the area ma makes the the size of the area would make a bit of an impact. So I'll just unfold that while we're driving down the road here. You can sort of see what we're dealing with. So I think this has got about an eight meter working width, and the horsepower requirements are not too bad. So let's head back to the farm and then we'll get cracking on some windrowing. I'll see you over there. All right, here we are back at the field. So what we're going to do is we're going to get straight into it. So we need to unfold the windrower by pressing L1 and X. We need to lower it by pressing circle, and then we need to turn it on. So what we're going to do is we're just going to whip around 
like we do, did with the mowing. And we're going to rake this up into a convenient uh, windrow. So there's a couple of different ways you can do this. So you can do it with a worker or you can do it yourself. So what I'm going to do is I'll quickly go through this and then we'll come back in and we'll get to the next step. So I'll see you in a couple of minutes. So that's, ba that's basically one example of how you can windrow. So you can also um, do this by means of a worker. So you just start them in the corner of the field. They'll do nice straight runs each time. It does take a little bit more time um, and there is a little bit of cost involved. But the way I've just done it is we do a headland row around the outside and then just do um, up and down rows uh, in the middle to try and merge as much of the material as possible. Now there'll be some material, which I'll just showcase quickly, some material that we didn't windrow. All right, we can still pick that up with the baler. However, what will happen is when this regrows, we'll basically just get a double cut of grass, which means the grass that's here will get picked up next time. Okay, so it's not critical that you pick up every last little bit. All right, so that's it's entirely up to you whether you want to do that. All right, so we're sending our worker back over. Now we're going to look at balers. All right, so balers fall into two broad categories. So we've got square bales. So we've got the smallest one here. We've got round balers, and then we move into silage uh, silage wrappers. So these ones have a bale wrapper on the back. Okay. So we're going to avoid that for the moment. Then we've got the high density rectangular slash square balers, which are quite expensive. Okay. And then I've got a couple of DLC uh, options here if you've got the season pass and other such things, but we're just going to focus on base game. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab probably the Kun VB319 just to do grass bales, okay? So this is this will do grass bales but turn them into silage. But for our purposes, what we want to do is we just want grass bales at this stage. So this guy right here is going to be us okay so 100 horsepower requirement so we've easily met that and it'll do 125 centimeter to 80 centimeter 180 centimeter okay so there it is right there so let's get this connected so pretty straightforward to connect obviously don't, but don't bump into it like i just did get that hooked up all right let's get this back to the farm and then we'll get to bailing So really central to looking after sheep is grassland care, which is obviously what we're focusing on here. All right, so we've got our baler attached. So you'll see in the UI on the top left, you've got a bale counter. So you only get that if you've got the season pass. Uh, that's my understanding. So if you don't have, if you have just the base game, you may not see the bale counter. So that's what that is. All right, now setting up the baler, what we want to do is change the bale size. So let's go R1, press try R3. So we go 150 up to 180 centimeter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do 180 centimeter bales, but essentially it's just your choice. It's your choice what you do. Um, obviously the lower the bales, the smaller the bale size, the more bales you need to pick up and the less dense in literage they'll be. Um, the larger ones will have more material inside. Okay, so I, my preference is to go as big as we can afford. All right, let's turn the baler on lower the pickup and then basically what we're going to do is drive on over the windrow as you can see here so once again any little bits that i miss here and there will pick up on the next cut but ideally the straighter your windrows the better the better and easier this is going to be so you can see we're filling up there nearly at 50 percent 
So we'll keep cruising along here and then once we get uh, 100% we'll go through the next step in the process. So you can see or you can hear it starting to beep. So that signifies that we're just about full. So there's 100%. So now what will happen is this won't pick up any more material. So if I try and drive over this windrow, you can see it's not picking it up. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to go... We can go unload. So let's go unload bow with tri uh, triangle. So you can see our bales popped out. What we're going to do now is turn on automatic drop. So I'm going to go press up on the D-pad. So now that'll automatically drop the bale when it's ready to go. So what we still need to be aware of, okay, is when the bale, it, when, we, when it starts to beep, uh, we still need to stop and unload the bale, but it just means that we don't have to interact with the controller for that um, unloading operation to happen. Okay, so we'll just go through, grab another windrow here. You'll see what I mean in, in, uh, in a second. So we've got 7,500 litre bales, which is actually quite good for our purposes. It just means we'll have fewer to pick up uh, when it comes time to pick up. Okay, see so we're starting to beep again. So let's grab this outside windrow. Okay. 97%, 99%. So as soon as it hits 100, it'll drop. Now I just backed up there a little bit, so we can resume the next pickup. So you can see the pickup there. Just zoom in a little bit. Picking up the grass and building the bow for us. It's a little bit hard to drive in this view. But you get the idea. That's basically that's basically the bailing process. So what I'll do is I'll run through, get these guys all bailed up. And then we'll come in with the next step. So see you in a couple of minutes. Uh, one thing I will mention is you can't hire a worker to do bailing. Okay. So just be aware of that. All right. Let's carry on. There we go. So we are done with the bailing. So it's just beeping its head off at me because it's about ready to be filled. But just say, for example, we weren't able to complete a full bale, which in this case we could because we've still got some material on the ground. But what I want to do is I want to drop this off. So if I lift the pickup, now we should have the opportunity to lower, drop this bale out. All right, so you can see we're at 99% there. So some balers give you the opportunity to unload a partial bale. Some balers tend not to. Okay, so what we need to do is say, for example, if we didn't have enough material to unload a full bale here, that's what we'll do is we will just keep the material in there for the next run. Okay, so let's grab, that's 100%. And then we can go unload baler. Okay, so that's one of the drawbacks with some of the balers. All right, but it's not a huge issue. Now, one thing I want to point out too is these larger capacity balers, the high density ones, they will automatically unload on the go, so you don't need to stop. Okay, so that's another benefit to them, but obviously that's where the improved or increased cost comes from. Um, this little guy here, the Macy Ferguson MF1840, I believe we'll do that okay but its bales are quite small so just be aware of that all right now we've got bales how do we pick them up so using the bit of kit that we've already got the best way to probably do this and what we're going to, have to do here is drop the front weight off as well so let's pop that there now we want to make sure we've got the right tractor here so let's go into our garage so our owned items medium tractors so we're in the John Deere 7810 so you can see up the top right hand the corner there tractors are required to pull tractors and tools this tractor can also attach a front loader so the Macy and this one will attach a front loader this one will not okay so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the shop and we're going to fit this out with a 
front loader attachment and a bale spike and then what we're going to do is we're going to manually pick these bales up and take them over to the feed point and then we're going to go from there so let's cruise on over to the shop and discuss that option along with a few others so there is many many ways to now obviously i will mention just quickly in our situation currently with two fields we've only got what one two three four bales okay so because we've only got four bales so one two three four it's not going to be a huge effort to move these um, with the front loader or, or a bale spike or something like that uh, but there are quite a few options to handle bales in volume so it's, what I mean by that is large volumes of bales uh, so auto loading trailers on console if you're on PC you'll have them as well but there is some automated base game equipment that will do uh, automated bale stacking to a degree but we're just going to cover off on the front loader and the bale spike because that's going to be the most economical um, and easy easy way right now to to move them but i will touch on the other options uh, when we get to the shop so all right here we are at the shop so let's have a look at the front loader category so front loader so what we want to do is come into tools find the front loaders and there's a whole bunch here for various um tractors class kubota john deere Hayer and quickie so you'd, you'd, you'd think the john deere one would be the one that you want okay so depending on the tractor if you're not sure so because we own this tractor we can modify it at the workshop so what i'm going to do is we take it to the workshop which is basically this uh situation over here so this is also a sell point as well so you just drive your vehicle in there vehicle options so you can sell customize repair and repaint okay so we don't want to sell so make sure you don't do that hit square to customize okay and then we're going to go to front loader attachment and we're going to go quickie or hayer so we'll just go quickie because they're both the same price we are going to add that okay configuration has been changed jump back into our tractor and now this is set to receive a um, front loader so we still got to purchase one so we come back into front loaders and we find the quickie that matches our horsepower so i think we've got a 170 horsepower tractor so we can go up to 140 horsepower on the front loader so let's grab that so we're going to lease this as well and there it is over there so let's get this connected okay so that's now attached so what we need to do now is come into front loaders tools and then go to front loader tools so that one's just here and we've got a we've got a bunch of uh, different um implements okay bale handler bale spike bale round fork just depends on what you want to do why i recommend the bale spike because this will do round bales and square bales uh, and allows you to um, transit both okay now that is it sitting on, sitting on the floor just there so we'll just drive up with our front loader get that attached so it's a pretty economical way to your leverage your tractor which you've already got uh, to be able to handle handle uh, bales so we'll discuss the controls when we get back to the farm but that's basically how it looks on the tractor okay pretty straightforward all right let's head back to the farm and we'll get to moving these bales into position to feed the sheep all right here we are back at the farm so let's get these guys moved so basically what we're going to do is let's discuss the controls quickly so basically l1 to operate the arm so hold l1 down the analog stick up and down will move it then left and right will tilt it and then they're basically your two functions okay so primarily what we need to do is just get it at around about the bale height drive on in spike the bale and then now we can transport it over to our feed point for the sheep so let's go and drop this one off now if the bale is too heavy you might need to chuck a, a a weight on the back of the tractor just like that so we see we just did a bit of a wheelie so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this off here that should get consumed yep so that's gone in there so if we check our animal menu now we can see we've got 7504 liters of grass from that bale okay so let's go get let's go grab that weight 
So the weight is obviously just there to counterbalance the uh, weight of the bale. Now you don't need this if your tractor is heavy enough, but because we're using medium tractors here, um, there's always a chance that they will have an issue. Okay, cool. So now we should be sweet. So let's go grab, let's grab these other guys. So I'll quickly grab those, stockpile them near the the barn, and then we'll go from there. So I'll throw on a bit of a time lapse. See you guys in a couple of minutes. Alright, there we go. So our grass bales are now stockpiled around the feed point. So you can put these pretty much anywhere. You can store some in here, pull them out when you need to. Um, so basically what we should see here is this one's being partially consumed. These two here are still full size in terms of 7,500 litres and our food should now be full. Okay, so that's pretty much how we get grass in bale form into the pen. So let's move on to the next step. All right, so what do we do now? So let's have a quick check on where we're up to. So basically we've got a field of cut grass here. So now what we can do is we can let this grow back. All right, um, and we can just reharvest it in two days or we can roll it with a roller. So if we come into the tool section, actually we'll go into the help menu. Okay, so rolling will grant you an additional yield bonus when rolling over the seed bed after sowing. Rollers in the grassland care section of the shop can be used after mowing grass. Rolling over fresh cut grass will grant you a fertilizing stage for the next harvest. Rolling over grass that's already grown will set it back to the first stage. So basically what you can do is you can roll the grass rather than using traditional fertilizer. Uh, so you can roll it or fertilize it, but you can only roll it once because it, once you roll it, so say now we've, we've cut it, if we roll it, we'll get a fertilizer bonus uh, without having to pay for fertilizer. However, if we let this grow to ready to harvest state and then roll it, it'll reset the growth and it won't give us, it'll just, it'll still give us the same initial bonus that it would have um, if we just did it at this stage. Okay. Now I don't normally recommend rolling basically because what we can do is we can sleep now for two days and this grass will grow back. So let's go ahead and do that just so you can sort of see how quickly this will grow back. So we're in October now, let's go ahead and sleep. The other thing that we'll get uh, hopefully in this next cycle, this month, we'll get some wool, which will have spawned at the uh, sheep barn. So we'll go and have a look at that and discuss what we can do with that wool. Okay, cool. So we haven't made any money today because we haven't sold anything, but our solar panels are still um, carrying the team in terms of making sure we're profitable. So we wanted to check that. We've talked about it before, but the finance screen so obviously October we had a, a fair bit of leasing cost and we bought the sheep. So that's why we're down 37k. But basically once that wool starts to come in, that's where we're going to make our money back. Okay, grass is growing. So this is 50% fertilized and we're getting a 50% yield bonus. Okay, cool. Let's check out the sheep. So you can see full health of our reproduction is 20% the way through. Now if we go check out our bales. So you can see we still get our bales there. They're still getting consumed. So as long as they're in and around this trigger, they'll they'll be consumed for food. Uh, and we've got our first partial pallet of wool uh, sitting here ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sleep again. So this will bring us into December, which is uh, essentially winter. So if we're playing with seasons on, there's nothing else we can really harvest at this stage. Now, I think in real life, you probably wouldn't be cutting grass in, in winter if there's snow, but we can do it in game according to the crop calendar, which we'll have a look at. Okay, cool. So we're obviously going to get reduced solar panel income as well. So that's why that's down. Okay, so one more day and that'll be ready to go. Let's check in on the sheep. So obviously they're on basically autopilot now because those, those large bales will continue to feed them um, as we go through. So I'm going to sleep till January. Get this grass back to a ready to harvest state. Alright, so we're in January, still in winter. Grass is growing. So because of the crop calendar, so let's have a look at that. Grass is allegedly 
Yeah, so it should be able to have you harvested in winter. Okay, so I think that's a three day growth state. Let's check in on the sheep. So we've got plenty of food there. Okay, let's sleep again, get into February, get out of this winter. Now we're obviously utilizing the sleep trigger to speed up time. Um, but the good thing here is our solar panels are giving us a bit of passive income. All right, obviously not uh, not through January. Uh, we've got snow now, which is pretty cool. So obviously we can't cut when it's snowing. But the sheep will still be producing, so let's go and have a look at those guys. So you can see through the winter we've, we've started producing pallets of wool. Okay, now this is the other benefit of this large barn because the wool production area is, is a lot bigger. Uh, how are we going for feed? Looking pretty good. So we're going to have plenty of food to get them through the winter here. And we've got plenty of wool sitting there ready to be processed. So let's go ahead and sleep again. And just admire how cool this looks in winter. Pretty awesome. Alright, so into March we should have sunshine again. Alright, here we are. So our property income is starting to increase again. We've still got some frost, but... The grass is ready to harvest okay so what we would do is basically a rinse and repeat so we're going to jump into this guy and i'm going to get him cutting on a worker this time because we're going to use our front loader tractor to do another job so what i like to do is kind of line up in the corner pretty close to where we're going to be so the worker obviously you can see the change in color so we've got the frosted paler grass on the outside and the darker grass, which is the, the harvestable grass, or well, the grass that we planted, is just here. So if we come up just to the edge of the field, hit high worker, jump on out, this guy will hurry up yeah, and cut our field. So that's now getting done for us, which is great, because what we want to do is we want to jump into our JD, which is this guy here. We're going to drop off the bale fork, so let's um, let's just pop the bale fork just here, and we're going to go grab a pallet fork. Okay, cool. Okay, so I'm going to send this guy to the shop on a worker. All right, now while he's at it over there, we're going to go and organise this pallet fork. So we want front loader tools yet again. We want to find the pallet fork, which is. That one there, the Albert pallet fork. I think I've run into something. Okay, don't know what's happening there. So with the workers, sometimes it's best to get them on the road. So you can see our worker that's cutting the um, grass for us has already done pretty much half the field. So a great use of um, leveraging the workers there. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, so this guy's on a go-to. Cool. Okay, so we want front loader tools. Like I was saying before, to get the Albut pallet fork, so we're just going to lease this. So obviously with a view, so obviously here, look, we've got a merger for, for sale for 30% off. So if you were looking to purchase a merger outright, you may look to use the used vehicle sales for that purpose. Okay. Now, another thing we're going to need is a trailer to transport the uh, wool. Okay. So we're talking about base game here. There are some auto, auto loading options for console, but I'll come to those uh, shortly. Okay, cool. So we're here at the shop. Let's grab our pallet fork. Now we do need to transport a trailer back. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try and be a bit fancy. So we're going to unload the front loader. We're going to drop the front weight off. So obviously we had the weight on to help us with our um, bale maneuvering. So we're gonna put the front weight on the front. So on the three point hitch, okay. Now the front loader attachment is separate to the three point. So what we should be able to do now. Is hook this back up. Okay, not the world's best driving. But it just saves us having to do true trips. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come into the vehicles menu. Uh, go into tools. Go into low loaders. And we're going to grab the Bremer 
transport wagon. So this blue one just here. Uh, we're going to lease that. And this is going to be for our pallets uh, of wool, okay? So once again, being economical here with the leasing, we're not going too big too, too soon. Uh, but I will discuss some auto loading options uh, towards the end of this setup. So let's get this guy back to the farm. Now with the low loader, if I hit circle to low, lower, you can see that it's lowered it right to the ground. If I hit circle again, that raises it up to give us some ground clearance. So the part of the reason why we like this trailer is because it's easy to get things on and off of, as you can see, because it's loaded to the ground. And once again, it's quite cheap, okay? Any tractor will be able to pull it. Pretty straightforward. Alright, so we've got our front loader with the pallet fork. So we're going to need that to lift up the bales. I mean, all the bales, the pallets of wool. Let's jump in this guy. So I'm going to send him off on a worker just to cut this second field. So now we're starting to leverage some workers to do some other tasks for us. And then what we're going to do after that is we're going to get the windrower to follow through because the windrowing can be done by a worker as well. It's only the bailing that has to be done by a human player. All right, so let's get this guy disconnected and let's load up some of these bales. I keep calling them bales, but they're pallets of wool. All right, so we just basically lower our forks down. Drive on in. Might not be the right spot. Now, my preference personally is to use a forklift to handle um, pallets, but you can do it with a front loader or a telehandler or a skid steer. Basically anything that's designed to have a pallet fork attached will we'll make it work, okay? So you can see, we're just, now what we're doing here is we're loading these up in preparation for selling them, okay? Now I've poorly positioned this camera next to the next to the um, silo. Okay, just nudge that back on there. And this tractor have being, a, I think it's a manual, so it's a bit jerky with its movements. Okay, just need to get that fork lined up properly. I think we clipped into the wall just about. No, we're okay. So say for example, if you just wanted to use your tractor, you can use it for this purpose, no problem. But if you wanted to grab a telehandler or a forklift, it'll basically do the same same job. Telehandler is a good option because it's uh, pretty useful for other jobs as well. Alright, let's just double check in on our mower. So he's basically done half that field. Let's load up one more. Now obviously you would load up all of these, but just for the purposes of the tutorial, just want to go through the process. Okay, so let's get this guy loaded up. Now obviously your loading will improve over time. Um, and if you choose to use an auto loading trailer, which I highly recommend, that will save you a ton of time. So we'll showcase that as well. Okay, so product is on the trailer. Hold down R1, push R3. That's now tension strapped down, so it's not going to go anywhere and it's not going to fall off. Okay, before we move on, this guy is got one more run to do. So which one are we going to use for the wind rowing, I think? I think we will use... Yeah, we'll use the Macy for the wind rowing. Obviously this worker is going to have a bit of a hard time navigating this final patch. We've done it. Oh, actually what I'll do is I'm not going to wind row this just yet. I'm going to show you a strategy called the double cut. So the double cut is basically we've cut one cut of grass okay now what we're going to do is we're going to sleep let the grass grow again and then we're going to cut it twice okay so what will happen is this material will stay there uh, and then when we cut over it again the second time it'll be double the quantity okay so let's go ahead and sleep 
and then it'll obviously give us some more wool. So I think we're getting low on feed, so yeah, we're still okay for feed. So this is where the gameplay loop really kicks in. It's basically because we've got um, a large number of animals and we've got to basically keep them fed to keep them productive and keep them making money. So that's where the that's where the challenge comes in to sort of manage the farm. Now obviously we're starting with 60 head of sheep. You know, you might not start with that many, but I feel like it's a good idea to start off bigger because then you'll produce more sooner. Okay, let's have a look at this. So we're 50% yield bonus and you can see our grass is coming through our cut grass and our windrows are sort of still there. Okay, check in on the sheep. So they're still good for food. We've had five offspring, so now we've got a full pen of 65. So that's cool. Okay, so we've slept again now. Our solar panel is really kicking back into gear. And our grass is ready to harvest, so that was two sleeps. Okay, so let's grab our mower again. And we'll initiate the double cut. And then we'll go and see how many pallets we've got to move. So, with the worker, get the front mower lined up in position. And then just hit circle, it'll detect the field. So he'll get the first mower underway. Second mower is underway now. And you can see now we've got a double cut of grass. So you can see the quantity is, has increased. So you can just see that visually, which is very cool. So that's a double cut. So now theoretically we should get twice as many bales out of that field as we did last time. All right, let's check in on how much wool we've got. Okay, cool, we've got a nice, nice batch of wool. Now we are down on food, so we have pretty much timed this perfectly. So by the time we get this cut, baled, um, and fed, the sheep will be, they won't have any downtime in their productivity, if that makes sense. All right, wool, ready to sell. So where do we sell the wool? Now if we come into the prices menu, navigate down to wool, you can see we've got Johnson's Farmer's Market and the Spinnery. And it's got a price fluctuation of 3,627 3, to 2,208. So being in May, that is around about the best price to sell the wool, which is perfect timing. Now, two options here to sell it. So we can sell it at the Spinnery. Okay, so the spinnery is a production is a sell point, but it can be purchased later on as a production point. Um, and any material that you put into the spinnery at this stage uh, will then show up as inventory when you purchase the building. So if th that's a good strategy if you're going to use the spinnery on the map. If you just want to sell the wool directly um, to either of these with no intention of purchasing the spinnery, um, you can go Johnson's Farmers Market. But what we're going to do is we're going to go the spinnery so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive so I'll show you where it is actually on the big map first so it is all the way up over here behind behind field 28 okay and we're located here in the central farm so what I'm going to do is we'll drive on over now you can leave your uh, telehandler or not your telehandler your uh, pallet fork and the uh, front loader, for lack of words escape me, you can leave that attached. It's just, just make sure it has, you have it off the ground so it's not going to clip into anything uh, and cause you an issue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive over there. I might just time lapse this so you can sort of see how to get there and then we'll come back in. Here we are, better pull up on the spinnery on the left here. So let's just cruise on in. It is sort of nestled in behind the uh, bushes here. So what we're gonna do is we've got the overloading point here. So if we drive into this now, uh, without connecting our front loader into the wall, you can see we've sold 13,000, 14,000 of wool, roughly. Now another thing I'll mention quickly is, obviously the transit time will increase um, the larger quantity of wool we take over. So you may want to consider doing that as well. So let's just untag this quickly so we don't have it flashing. 
Okay, so now this is a sell point. Okay, sold some wool into there. Happy days. Now, for the purposes of the tutorial, we're going to purchase this point. Okay, so buy production point 60,000. We now own this building. So you can see in the bottom right hand corner there, we've got 4,000 litres of wool uh, put into the facility. Okay, now if we come into our main menu over to production chains, we've got fabric wool, fabric cotton. So it's automatically running because we've got materials in there. So it's a little bit hard to see fabric wool, the blue dot. Um, and then it's going to produce fabric for us. And that's set to storing currently. So you can sell it automatically, which I don't recommend because you take about a 30 to 40% hit on the sale price. And then there's distributing, which will send it to the next production chain. Uh, in our case, it is the tailor shop. Okay. So what we're going to do is we are going to set this to distributing. Okay. So we are going to send our fabric to the tailor shop okay now the benefit of doing it this way is if you have it set to storing the fabric that's produced will spawn here so then we have to manually transport it to the next production point um, in the production chain so for the, the production chain for wool basically goes wool fabric clothes and then the clothes if we have a look in here are worth 31,000 currently and that's about the maximum price so very va very valuable uh, based on the wool input so basically all we have to do is bring the wool to this point feed the production it'll turn into fabric and then it'll give us a tailor shop now the tailor shop is not on the map okay so there is no tailor shop on Elm Creek so I've double checked this a couple of times. I'm happy to be corrected if anyone else can find one. But what we can do is we can build it on our own farm, which is what we're going to do next. So I'm going to send this guy back to the main farm on a worker. So hopefully they don't get hung up on anything. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, our mower is completed. So we're going to switch out the mower now for a wind rower. And then we're going to use the worker to windrow our double cut grass. Which should give us an increased yield. So let's just um, try and be a bit tidy here with our implements. So we'll drop that off so we can grab that later. Okay, cool. Got our windrow connected. Uh, what I should have done is cut that other field. That would have been smart. So what I might do is I'll use the other tractor for that because we do have three. So just in the interest of saving time. Okay, we'll get this guy lined up. And underway. So you can see now the windrow is a little bit thicker and a little bit higher based on the double cut. Okay, this guy is heading back to the farm on the worker, which is good. Uh, we want to get into this tractor hook up this mower uh, get this other field sorted out so it's going to drop off this drop off these implements so the good thing about the mowers is they'll attach to any tractor the only problem with this tractor is it's not as maneuverable as the other two but you can get tractors with four wheel steering that will alleviate that issue okay so I'm going to send him going up this way All right, cool. So let's just take a quick stock of what we're going on. So we've got some more grass cutting happening. We've got some wind rowing happening. Now what we could do is when our worker arrives back, which he's right on cue, we can switch uh, straight, to, straight away to the baler and then start baling up this grass. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to offload this low loader. So we're just sort of looking to improve our harvesting efficiency here as much as possible. Now, I don't think we get a crop destruction penalty, do we, for driving on the grass? I mean, I guess we're about to find out. No, we don't. Okay, good to know. So crop destruction for grain crops obviously comes into play. So just be aware of that. All right, let's get to baling. So I'm going to throw on a time lapse. 
uh, while these guys are doing the work and then we'll come back in once the bailing is done and then we'll go through our next steps. So see you guys in a couple of minutes. So our wind rower has stopped working, but let's get this guy back on task. It'll just be because of the worker not recognizing the entirety of the field. So if we get him started and then he'll be able to figure it out. Okay, so I think we've exceeded our bale count from last harvest. So I've just missed half of those, half of that run, which is handy. Let's try this again. Just gotta make sure every time you get out of the baler, now is that load? Yeah, let's try this. You've got to turn it back on, so I'll come back for that once I get a clearer run at it. Yeah, you've just got to make sure that you, when you exit the vehicle, the baler will turn off and the pickup will lift, so you've just got to make sure that they're back on before you drive away, otherwise you won't pick up any material. Okay, let's get this guy moved. Uh, let's fold the windrail. So I'm just going to put him up top corner here. So once you sort of get into the routine, uh, you'll get into a bit of a better workflow. Things will run a lot smoother. Right, turn bather on. And then you'll just get it, you'll find your own uh, your own groove, essentially. Okay, so I'm just gonna finish up picking up these last little bits. Alright, let's see if we can unload this half bale. Doesn't look like it. Yep. Alright, so yeah, it looks like this baler you can't unload a partial bale, so just that's good to know if you are going to use this one. Alright, okay, so let's get that disconnected. That guy can chill. Alright, so now what we would do is we would just grab our... So how many do we end up with? Let's have a look. So we think we got maybe four last time, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we've got half in the machine. So that's almost double the bales from last time without any fertilization so if we fertilized i reckon we'd get seven bales each time and you could probably do three to four harvests per year of grass okay so that's something to that's something to be mindful of if you are going to really ramp up your grass production because obviously for the given land size that we've got if we want to improve the productivity and capacity of the yield uh, we we need to get more out of our land okay so unless you've got more land, that's um, that's one way you can go about it. All right, now what we're going to do is get the tailor shop. So there's no tailor shop on Elm Creek as we talked about, but you can build one. So if you come into productions, into cell points, sorry, not cell points, uh, productions into factories, what we are looking for is the tailor shop. So I believe there's only one. Yeah, I think this might be the only one. This is it here. So it takes goods, transforms them into different products. So in this case, it takes fabric and turns them into clothes. So what we are going to do is because we've got a convenient location here, what we're going to do is we're going to pop this probably, I would say, just here. So the the clothes is going to spawn at the back corner there. So you can see the black and yellow cross hatching. So we've got easy access. Um, the interaction points are on the side and the delivery point with the trailer is just there so we've got good access there if we're ever going to deliver our product in that manner so I'm just going to zoom out and pop it just on this corner thereabouts cool so you can obviously you can pick wherever you want to put this I'm just putting it here for space constraints but you might want to style it up however you like but basically this is just how I'm going to roll so let's go and have a closer look Okay, so tailor shop. 
Uh, the clothes are going to spawn there. The interaction point is here. And the delivery point for the fabric is here. So if we come into here, we're going to see both of our spinnery, okay, which we purchased, which is the one uh, far away on the map. Okay, and it, so basically the fabric wool, which is active, and it's distributing uh, fabric currently, okay, it's going to distribute to the tailor shop. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to set the tailor shop to storing. So basically when the fabric is received, it'll take the fabric and you can see the recipe there, two fabric to one clothes. It tells you how many cycles per month and what the cost is. So we just need to make sure this is active. So it's got a blue dot next to it. It's active if it's red, materials are missing, okay? So the wool from our spinnery hasn't translated into fabric yet because we haven't gone through um, a game day cycle. But this is now set up to receive uh, fabric from our spinnery. And obviously this wool here needs to be transported over, so we'll do that at some stage. But now we're going to feed the sheep. So I will, I might time lapse, might time lapse it. I might um, just sort of cut it together, and then we'll go through the next step. So let's go and switch out this bow fork. I don't want to make this tutorial too too granular. I think you guys get the idea um, if you're watching to the stage. Uh, one thing we do do need to do is switch out our uh, pallet fork. So what I'm going to do is. I might actually just put my pallet fork here. It's obviously handy to remember where you've put it. Because I think what we're going to do is we're probably going to put some bales in this little area here. So if I can get my bale fork. Alright, I'm going to load up some of these bales and then we'll come back in. So I'll see you guys in a few minutes. So you can just see there I've tried a double stack method. I don't think it's going to work. I'm going to have to do one at a time. If I, have a, if I had a heavier weight on the back, this would absolutely work. But let's just persevere with one at a time. Oh, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to showcase the auto-loading bale trailer rather than do this manually because we've already seen that. So let's go and grab... Uh, we'll use this tractor, but I'm going to drop off this weight. We're going to head down to the shop and we're going to talk about... Um, the bale loading options. So we're going to use, we're going to talk about the mods and then we're going to talk about the uh, the round bale. I might show both. I mean, we'll see how we go, but I'll see you guys over at the shop. Right, here we're at the shop. Okay, so let's go have a look at our bale loading options. Okay, so if we come into tools and we come into bale loaders, there's a variety of bale loaders that we've got here. Okay. So the Anderson RBM2000 will do round bales up to 180 centimeters, which is what we've got on our farm. So 125 up to 180. Uh, the multi-pack will do square bales. We've got bale trailers here that'll be manually loaded. Uh, and then a couple of other bales loaders. So this one here, the FSX, FSX 6372 will do uh, rectangular bales. And then we've got our auto loading bale trailers. So the one that I recommend and use quite often is the Roland. So this is a mod, so you find that in your downloadable content section. And if we go auto load, so there's an auto load option here, turn that to yes, so when we purchase it, it'll auto load the bales for us, okay? But because we're focusing on base game equipment for the moment, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the Anderson RBM2000. So this functions like an auto loading trailer, but it does have a bit of a mechanical um, pickup mechanism which I'll demonstrate in a second so let's go ahead and just lease that so we'll lease that straight out of the box no changes all right let's go ahead and get hooked up so you've got to make sure if you're so obviously we're using round bales here so you want to make sure that you've got the round bale trailer so you can see that signified down the bottom so this will only pick up round bales so just to be aware of that so this is where it starts to layer in the complexities of the game so You've obviously got to learn a little bit about farming and sort of farming practices as well as learning the game at the same time. So that's why this guide is kind of structured the way it is. So we're going sort of step by step uh, through each element. So let's get this guy back to the farm and then we'll demonstrate how it works. All right, here we are. So 
basically what we want to do operating position so we've got the little grab arm comes out and what we're going to do is drive up to the round bale and what should happen is that'll now pick it up and place it in position on the trailer so before we were using the bale spike you can sort of start to see the benefit of having this machine on the farm okay so obviously there's a bit of cost involved because um, obviously we're leasing quite a bit of stuff but once we start to get some profit from our clothes this will all start to come together now we do have some machinery that we're not using so the harvester we could potentially sell uh, the cedar we could sell as well so there are options that we could increase our cash uh, by selling some stuff but currently we're just hanging on to it because um, it's a good overall strategy all right let's put this back into transport position now how many do we get so i'm counting three six seven we said seven and a half so this will take somewhere around 26 i believe okay now what we want to do is what we can do is it basically unloads these like a sausage so what i'm going to do is just out the front of the the feed point here let's just go unload and what will happen is it just pushes them off so what I might do is go back a touch and then we confirm that pushes them off all the way we can drive out and then now they are uh, let's lower the platform get this out of the way now they're basically in a convenient position to be loaded into the food point so I'm just going to park this here detach then I'm going to flick, fl flip back around uh, and then we'll throw some feed into so you can see basically the convenience of that machine is to move the bales in bulk to the area where we want to store them uh, in preparation to turn them into feed for the sheep okay so obviously we're a bit caught up here so we're just gonna potentially what it might have been might have been better to uh, locate this slightly else slightly further away so we could have a little bit more of a cleaner loading operation but that's got some feed in there so if we double check our animals so the feeds right back up so we are all set to move on so let's double check our productions are all sweet yep cool right now what we're going to do is so obviously this wool actually what i'm going to do is while we're here so bonus tip now rather than having to manually move this wool via um, pallet, pallet and front loader or forklift and truck and trailer, we can ship it automatically with this mod, which I'm about to show you. So in the build mode, if we come over to animals, over to sheep. So it is this one here. It's called the automatic shipping of animal products mod. So this will do eggs, wool, uh, and I think a couple of other things. So basically this is it here. Okay, so you can see it's got a, it's very hard to see, but in front it's got a cross hatched area. Okay, what we need to do there is we need to overlay this into the spawn point for the wool. So just like so. Okay, so if we pop that in there. Okay, so this is the small building. Cross hatch overlay. So anything that spawns in this overlaid area will now distribute to this building which is right there which is not very handy currently so what we need to do is we need to come to the interaction point out the back so if we go into here we see we've got wool shipping and it is active and we want to set it to distributing okay so now what's going to happen is this wool shipping mod is going to distribute our wool to the spinnery so we don't have to transit it there ourselves okay now this first one I'm gonna to need to move manually so I'm gonna try and be a little bit sneaky and see if I can use my bow fork because basically what it's what it's doing there is it's storing it in this situation here so one pallet at a time so for it to distribute what we want to do is see if we can't nudge it back into that area and now that's disappeared now because these pallets have already spawned basically they they won't 
be detected until they move so if I just give that a nudge that one will go if I give that one a nudge that one will go and then I'll nudge the other three here so I'll just give this a bit of a nudge gently into the distribution point like so so I don't know why that's not all the way gone oh it might be a 5000 litre capacity so let's have a look so we come into here now cool so we have 5000 litres capacity that is going to that is going to distribute to our spinnery and then the production chain is basically complete okay so it basically just automates the process okay so rather than having to manually handle and manually move things around that's why you would do that all right let's go and sleep so we've picked up our hay we've got our grass ready to grow again we've automated our production chain and now we are going to go to sleep and see what we've got potentially we'll have some fabric i mean have some clothes and that's the final step in the uh, production for wool Cool, so the solar panels are still carrying the team at the moment, just keeping us breaking even. So, yep, 50% grass. Let's go and have a look at our production menu. Okay, so we've got 500 litres of clothes. So if we pop around the back here, yeah, we won't see anything because it's a partial pallet. So we've got to wait till um, that has reached 1,000. So we've got 10,000 litres of wool in the spinnery we've got okay is that active yeah, definitely running okay 16 liters of fabric okay obviously we can and we can ramp up our um, wool production by adding cotton to the mix okay so cotton's a bit more of an advanced crop but we're just utilizing the sheep at the moment okay cool so that's that's working how's the animals so they should have plenty of feed so these big bales are going to feed them no problem let's go and check our grass so you can start to see the loop that we're getting into here. Um, probably one more growth state on that. And then we can do another batch of grass bales. So let's go ahead and sleep again. Um, and if you were playing this for real on, on your own playthrough, you'd be keeping an eye on the used vehicle sales for discounted mowers and things that you might want to purchase. But we're, we're really focused on building up the clothes to sell. And that's really where our profit is going to accelerate. Okay, ready to harvest. Beautiful. Looks like we've got a pallet of clothes ready, so let's go and inspect that. Okay, so one pallet of clothes. Let's check in on our animals. So, yep, all good. Okay, 11,000 litres of wool. Fabric is... So, obviously, the fabric is getting consumed pretty quickly because we basically get a, yeah, a halving of the production amount each time. Two wool, one fabric. Yes, okay. Cool. All right. So first batch of clothes. Obviously, we let that run through. Get a batch of clothes there. Just double check that we, this is working correctly as well. Yep. So it's shipping it over. All right. So basically, what we would do now is I'm not going to do it now because we've already gone through it. I'd basically go through the cutting of the grass, the windrowing, the baling, get another batch of bales ready to go, and then I would stockpile them in front of the sheep barn. And then probably what we would look to do is we'd probably run that cycle for one more year wait till we get a batch of clothes so obviously the clothes if we have a look at the prices menu so we, we touched on it before current price of twenty two thousand. so peak price in april of 30 grand okay per thousand liters so you can see why they're so valuable so what i'm going to do is i'm going to skip the cutting of grass now just for the tutorial but if i was playing this for real i would just um, hook straight in and do another round of cutting, windrowing and baling like I mentioned. All right, let's go and check how many pallets of clothes we've got. Probably still only got the one. Okay, cool. All right, so, yeah, basically what I would do, so we're st still waiting for another pallet to spawn. So grass is, oh, the grass has got another growth state. Cool. So I think this is actually longer, is it? So you can let it grow an extra day, and I believe it gets, gets longer again. So does it tell us the expected yield? I don't know if it's cosmetic or if it actually improves the yield. Um, I could be wrong on that, but just food for thought. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to load up that pallet of clothes and we're going to go sell that. Obviously, it's um, not a not a great amount of clothes. We'd be, if, if we were playing this for real, I would, um, I would definitely stockpile them and then sell them at the best price. 
which is May, I believe. So we've got another 12 months to go through. Okay, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to flick through a few more months. So I'll, I'll, cut, I'll come back in once, once it's best price to sell. And then we'll get this loaded up and then we'll go from there. And we'll go and sell them. And then you can see sort of the, the real value of the clothes. So I'll see you guys when it's best price to sell those clothes. Alright, so we've slept through a few months. We've stockpiled some clothes. Um, so normally you wouldn't do this. Uh, you would do the harvesting like I explained. Uh, in the previous step uh, and you may even look to expand into a, another sheep barn so you may take your reproducing sheep place them in a second barn somewhere else um, I mean you could potentially fit one in here it'd be entirely up to you but I probably would wait till I sell these the first batch of clothes uh, before I'd look to do that or you could potentially sell some of these machines to make some money like I said before all right so rather than uh, manually handle those pallets of clothes what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab uh, an auto loading trailer so the one that we want is so the one that we want is in the in the tool section under trailers uh, it's a mod it's called the lizard logistics big bag trailer auto load pack mod so you can see there it'll hold 16,000 liters of most of the productions in game so you can see that there in the UI uh, configuration we want is general products you can change the wheels and colors if you want we're just going to lease that and what this is going to do is it's going to auto load our clothes so we don't have to manually handle them because we can't distribute them for sale and if we do auto sell we do get a penalty so I much prefer to manually move them and this is just one way to do it quickly and efficiently so this is it here in all its glory great mod for console PC players will have uh, different options but this is just one that I recommend for PS5 so let's head back over to the farm get these loaded up and we'll go sell them all right, here we are back at the main farm. So all we need to do now is drive up alongside these pallets of clothes and we should should get the loading trigger. So there we have it there. So we just need to maneuver ourselves into getting this last one, which we now have. All right, so obviously we've only got about a half load here, but 5,000 litres of clothes is probably going to be about, well, let's see. Now I've skipped forward to April just to demonstrate best price on easy economy because we're on new farmer mode. We got we have that advantage, but you can change the economy settings based on your difficulty at any stage. Okay, current price is 30 grand at the grocery mart. So let's tag that place. So the grocery mart is just down the road uh, on Elm Creek. So let's go and hit that up just here. So let's drive on over to the sell point, get these guys sold and see how much we get. All right, here we are. So the selling point is just here. So if we drive into it, start overloading clothes, and there we go, 152 grand for five liters of clothes, 5,000 liters of clothes. So you can start to see the, the value of clothes um, and wool, once it's been put through its various stages of production, can be quite valuable. So we haven't really made up any money up until this point, but now we've got an income mechanism sort of set up through um, our process of sheep farming so what we'll do is we'll head back to the farm we'll do a bit of a recap and then we'll close out the video so you can see that there $153,000 in income and $152,000 in sold products so quite a good day quite a good day's work if you ask me all right so let's recap the sheep farm build okay so Basically what we did was we planted grass in fields 45 and 46 on the new farmer mode map for Elm Creek. We have retained all of our original buildings, machinery and equipment uh, with the addition of the mowers. So we've got the front and rear mowers just there. We've got the windrower to make our baling a little bit easier. We've employed the uh, auto loading trailer which I talked about before to move the uh, clothes uh, without having to manually load them to the sell point we've got our baler over here so 180 centimeter round baler which will do grass hay and straw so our purposes we're just feeding the sheep grass because that's the main feed that'll give them 100 percent productivity now uh, we've got a front loader here on our tractor so with a bale spike uh, a front loader and a pallet fork which i've forgotten where i've put so to move these bales around um, individually um, or using the uh, round bale trailer. So this is the base game 
auto loading trailer well, i'll say it's auto load but i demonstrated that to move bales in bulk and then obviously we've got our sheep all mature so we've got our sheep producing wool at a at a high rate okay so they're, they're pumping out the wool all good and then we've got the um, animal product shipping mod which basically takes our wool that spawns and distributes to it distributes it to our spinnery which is located up here on near field 28 so that's our production point that we own so rather than having to transport it manually and then finally that spinnery distributes to this tailor shop which then produces the clothes which we can then sell oh, and we also had the auto loading sorry the low loading trailer initially to sort of showcase how we can transport materials around without having to use those mods and such okay but that is pretty much it for wool production now what would you do what are your next steps so obviously i skipped through a few days a uh, few months to stockpile some clothes and other such things but basically what you would do is you would look to increase the yield of your grass first and foremost so either by grass rolling or by fertilization so that way you would get more you would get more yield of out of your grass and you'd have a larger stockpile of grass for feed purposes okay the other thing is you would look to probably add uh, a second sheep barn so if we were going to add a second one to this farm we could potentially if we were a little bit maybe uh if we had a bit more room we could probably place down another one of these or you could place down two initially and then breed your sheep transport them into the other or just buy them outright like i did um and then you just sort of ramp up your wool production from there so you can make more clothes all right so obviously the more sheep you have the more grass bales you're going to need the next option would be to start buying more land okay so you can plant more grass get more bales another thing you can do is plow up these fields so these joins um, can join fields together so utilizing the land that we've got we can increase the field size to plant more grass if we wanted to uh, if we were going to do the manual work we could cut the verge grass with the mower that way we can increase our yield obviously we just focused on our field grass because the workers will only do the field grass and not the verges uh, another thing we could do is start to add more solar panels so the more income generators we have the more money we'll make every time we sleep uh, that type of thing we've also got our, got our combine so we could start to utilize that to um, get into some grain harvesting for contracts that sort of thing so really ton of options that you can really springboard off with this setup because you'll be making good money and it's pretty much rinse and repeat in terms of um, looking after the sheep all right guys there you have it my guide on how to set up a sheep farm in farming simulator 22 so i hope you enjoyed the video leave a like uh, if you like the video leave a comment below if you've got any questions uh, consider sharing the video subscribing to the channel really helps me out um, and lets me know that you guys are enjoying the content once again thanks very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye for now